So I guess the first question is, what has climate change got to do with health? Well, I'd say there are, there are two main connections between climate change and health. The first is that climate and ecological systems are actually the underpinning of all human health. You know, people think about the effects of climate change on commodity prices or you know, agricultural yields and so on. That's fine if you're an economist or, or an agriculturalist, but what we also have to understand is that those are also the things that human societies and that human health actually runs on. So when we have climate change threatening to deplete water resources or threatening to harm agricultural yields, the real concern for us, the bottom line uh, of, of that, is the impacts on, on human health, and particularly in the most vulnerable populations in the world that are already struggling with climate-sensitive infectious diseases or food insecurity or water insecurity. So it's a fundamental determinant of, 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 uh, of human health. And what kinds of problems are we expecting to see and, and how serious are they? Well, we expect to see um, direct effects of, of climate change on health. We're already starting to see those. So we're starting to see more severe heat waves, uh, for, uh, for example. We're starting, we think, to, to, to see signals in terms of more extreme precipitation events, more droughts and floods. And those are, th are things that we pretty much understand. But we're also starting to, uh, to, to see the early evidence of, of the impacts of, of climate change on things like agricultural yields or, or water security. And the concerns that we have is that uh, over time, those, those um, impacts are only going to get worse. Um, it's only going to lead to, to, to more water insecurity, to, to greater problems for agricultural yields and so on. And so, so our, our, our major concern is that this will un undermine the environmental determinants of health, the things that all human societies uh, ultimately rely on. And what kind of policy changes are needed in order to address these issues? Well, I'd say there's probably three main things we can do. The, the, the first is that there needs to be an appreciation amongst the, the climate negotiators, the people who decide, who decide climate policy, that this is not just an environmental issue. It's not even just an economic or a development issue. It's actually a, a human health issue. And this was recognised in the, the early years when people started to come up with the climate change response, but it seems to have been forgotten over time. And so we need to make the connection back to, uh, to people that we're actually talking about the impacts of climate change on health and also the, the way in which the, the, the policies we may put into place to reduce greenhouse gas emissions also affect health and in many ways can actually bring very large benefits to human health if we get those right. Um, so we have to put health back in the, the centre of the discussion. The second point is that we know that many of the, the, the health impacts that we're concerned about um, uh, from climate change, effect upon disease, diarrheal disease and so on, are things that we do actually know how to deal with. So we need to put into place to strengthen the public health systems that should already be dealing with these problems and are only going to become more stressed because of climate change. So we, we need to respond in the way we know how to respond. And the third point is that we know we need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We, that's absolutely essential for, um, you know, for, for, for environmental reasons and for human health reasons, as, as I've said. Um, but there are different ways in which you can do that. And some of the, the strategies that, that you can put in, into place to reduce greenhouse gas emissions can have um, immediate and very large public health benefits. If you think of reduced air pollution, for example, as we move away from coal-fired power, um, the, the health benefits of walking and cycling and sustainable transport um, rather than everybody driving in their car, uh, getting in their car to go everywhere. So we need to do all of those things, I, I, I think, as an overall policy response. And what do you hope to achieve with this conference today? What, what would you like to come out of it? Well, I, I think that we need to um, capitalise, in fact, on the progress that's already been made. Um, a few years ago, very few people were talking about climate change as a, as a health issue. And within the last few years, there's been a, an appreciation amongst the, the, the major public health actors. So the, you know, the, the Lancet, the, the British Medical Journal, the World Health Organization itself has really recognized that climate change is one of the, uh, the, the, the greatest threats to, uh, to health for the next century. Also, if we get the response right, it's also one of the greatest opportunities for public health um, in, in the next century. And that, has, that really has moved on within the last few years. So what we're looking for is, is basically a more a positive um, action-oriented response. So we, 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 we talk less about what issues we should worry about and start talking in concrete terms about what we should actually do about the problem. And critically, I think making the link to the general public, so we're actually talking about positive things that they can do and policymakers can do to both reduce greenhouse gas emissions and, and, to, uh, and, and, and to protect health. And we have to be organising basically amongst ourselves as a, as a public health community so that we can take responsible public health decisions that both reduce cl climate change to protect health in the long run, but also to get the public health benefits of a, of a, of a greener, more equitable, sustainable economy. Thank you very much for joining us.